a 500 kilometer road trip straight to the heart of the Swedish wilderness. Join the journey to the Wildmarkswagen. The wilderness road will take you to beautiful waterfalls, to lakes mirroring the sky, and to old Sami dwellings. Enjoy the wildlife of this northern part of Jämtland and Lapland. Good morning, it's 6 a.m. in Wilhelmina and we are going to do the Wildmarkswagen today. And look at this blue sky above me. We left the town Wilhelmina, the gateway to Wildmarkswagen, at 6 a.m because we had heard that the road can get quite busy in the main season. Characteristic for the first part of the journey from Wilhelmina are the beautiful forests only interrupted by several lakes that you're driving along. You see this in front of me, it's beautiful weather today, but there is a little bit of fog every now and then. And that's basically when we know that we are approaching a lake again. That the cold air outside meets the warmer and as well much more humid air that is rising from the lake surface. Yes, you guessed right. I was in my element again, taking pictures and videos every five minutes while I forced my travel partner to stop with me every time. So it's a very, very good idea to start early on the Wildmarksweg. We're not meeting many cars or campers at the moment, but it's still kind of like uh, 6.30 a.m. And this is what you see at the Wildmarkswagen for the first probably one and a half hours. Wildmarkswagen means translated wilderness road and this 500 km long road trip will take you from Wilhelmina in Lapland to Strömsund in Jämtland and the wilderness is literally just next to you. The tourism board advertises the area with the concept of hiking on wheels. It's not only a great destination for motorcyclists but as well for bicycles. Wow, just look at these lakes. Isn't it absolutely beautiful? Crazy. Even if you don't make picture stops every five minutes like I do, there are a lot of places that are worth a stop along the Wildmarkswagen. And the first one we came by is the waterfall Trapstegforsen. So let's find a way to get closer to that waterfall. Thank you. 
chopstick frozen literally means stare of waterfalls. And some people say it's one of the most pretty waterfalls in Sweden. It has several small cascades after each other with an elevation of approximately 10 meters. Goodbye, pretty waterfall, and I will now really try not to stop before we reach our next destination, which is Fatmo Macke, an old Sami and church village. So to get to Fatmo Macke, you have to turn off from the Wildmarkswagen and ride this gravel road for about 8 kilometers. If we would do the journey of Wildmarkswagen all over again, we would definitely choose to stay in Fatmomacke instead of Wilhelmina. Fatmomacke is located along the upper side of Lake Kultsjön, offers camping, some cabins and a kiosk and a cafe. Here is the little nice cafe. Some of you might remember the cloudberries I tasted in Norway that were not ripe. So now it was time for some real cloudberry marmalade with waffles. Sharing equally. Mm. Hey, don't take everything. We are walking to the Kirkstad Fatumake, which is an old Sami habitat. And um, there's supposed to be still some old huts and the church and beautiful nature. The church and traditional Sami meeting place of Fatmo Macke are located just a short walk away from the parking space, but they are not accessible by car. Fatmo Macke is located at the foot of the 1,600 meters high Maas Fjellen, and the name translated means place where you hug each other. Fatmomake Church Town is the most prominent Sami church town in Sweden and one of the best preserved in the world. Fatmomake has been used by the Sami as a meeting place and summer settlement for thousands of years. The oldest buildings in Fatmomake date back to the end of the 16th century, even though most buildings are from the beginning of the 18th century. It is still used as a cultural meeting place today, as it has for thousands of years. The town has very high symbolic value for the Sami community. It is a protected cultural reserve today, but most huts are privately owned and still in use. Here we are, back on the road of the Wildmarkswegen again. And the sign says Klimfjell, 12 kilometers, and that's where we go next. As you can see, uh, you can meet all sorts of motorcyclists here. It's really, really a nice road to ride, no matter if you're on a GS or on a Harley or in a camper van. And now as well, the environment is changing. We are climbing up a mountain and um, we for the first time as well see some snow and there are so much less trees already. we were approaching Steckenjok, the main attraction along the Wildmarkswagen. The word Jok is Sami for watercourse. 
no trees no more just flat and for sweden we are on a very very high altitude now it's absolutely stunning and i think this is definitely the most beautiful part of this whole wilderness road the road over Steckenjok is only accessible from the beginning of june until the middle of october due to the vast amounts of snow in winter not uncommonly depths of up to 6 meters. With an altitude of 876 meters, the road over the Steckenjok Plateau is above the forest line and the highest paved road in Sweden. Our next destination was another waterfall, but first I had to maneuver the big GS to the right parking. Yeah, we want to visit this waterfall here and somehow I missed the right turn for the parking and now I want to take the shortcut and the spike is just so big in the lower part due to, to the boxer engine. So it's really not um, so easy to sneak illegally through the stones that block the bridge much easier on my tannery. Rakko Fallet is supposed to be the most romantic waterfall along Wildmarksvägen and is located between Jorn and Stora Blosjön. A narrow path leads either to the bottom or to the top of the beautiful waterfall. Brakofallet is one of the best spots for swimming in crystal clear, cool water on Wildmarkswagen. We were too lazy to get off our motorcycle clothes though and just enjoyed the beautiful views right next to the waterfall. Now we are about half the way of the distance of our Wildmaxwagen excursion, but um, we have already seen most of the sites that I wanted to visit. Of course, the waterfall Brakkofallet was not our last stop. We came by a lake that made us feel like living in heaven. I'm a bit sad because we missed out on another waterfall I wanted to see because I just didn't realize that we drove by and now we decided it's too late. So no third waterfall. The last, more southern part of the Wildmarkswagen was the least spectacular part of the trip. But it was good to do some kilometers without stopping every five minutes. 
We are going direction Strömsund from now on. Um, if you do the build Max Wegen from south and not north like we did, that's where it starts. But um, just for your information, there are many more Sami villages, waterfalls and sites that you can look at on the um, build Max Wegen. There are a lot of things to explore, so we only did a few of them that we wanted to see, but you can explore here forever. So We only drove by Strömsund very quick and then headed to our accommodation on the countryside. Thank you, Wildmax Wegen, for the beautiful day of traveling. Thanks for exploring Wildmax Wegen and its surroundings with me. The next episode will take us further south in Sweden, over Sweden's highest gravel road and through some more beautiful nature. Subscribe and tune in next Thursday and leave me a comment and a thumbs up if you liked this episode. <laughs>